Hi everyone, Peter Edgerton here. Um, I've been playing around with Windows Autopilot recently, so I thought I, was, I would do a quick video to show you um, how to set this up, how to um, provision a machine with Windows Autopilot, and what you need to do that. So, Windows Autopilot, there's been a lot of talk about this recently, and it's um, kind of touted as the next OSD, Operating System Deployment. Um, is it OSD at the moment? Uh, no, it isn't just yet. It's it's very much a V1 product, and there's lots of uh, development to still go on this. Uh, I know the guys at Microsoft are pressing on uh, with lots of amendments and uh, improvements to this, so that'd be great. So could it be OSD in the future? Yeah, quite possibly. Um, obviously, a lot of devices now are, are born in the cloud, as they say, so this allows you to basically enroll your device straight into Azure Active Directory and your NDM authority um, which might be in tuning and it could be something else as well so I'm on at the moment just the overview of Windows Autopilot documentation page and it lists a few of the prerequisites so some of the prerequisites that you need it's got to be um, registered to the organization the device will be registered to to the company it's not really for a BYOD type scenario um, it's going to have Windows 10 1703 or later, so it might be 1709 or you know, the next the next jump. Uh, device must have access to the internet. It's going to have direct access right out to the internet. So if you're at home on home broadband, perhaps, then then that should be fine. If you're in a um, you know you're in a coffee shop or something like that, then you can get access out to the internet. That's fine as well. I believe there are issues, however, at the moment with um, proxying. So if you're in an office and you need a proxy server to get out to the internet. I, uh, I think there's a known issue with that at the moment, but they are certainly aware and are working on it. So I expect to see that resolved soon. Um, you need Azure AD Premium, P1 or 2 is fine. And as I say, Intune, or you can, um, if you've got another MDM service, then it should do auto enrollment for that as well. Okay, so the scenario here is basically you purchase your device from one of the um, major manufacturers. There's a, there's a list of manufacturers, and I'll, I'll attach this to the post. That, um, that this video lives in um, and basically they will ship out the device to the end user wherever they be home address probably most likely uh, or remote office perhaps uh, and they will basically give you the information that you need about that device you can upload it into autopilot and then when the person receives the device they can simply unpack it power it up um, watch a couple of screens and then input their email address and the password and effectively it will register, it will detect that it's registered with autopilot and then provision it in the way that you've um, told it to. So, sounds awesome. So, let's give it a go. I'm just doing this in lab at the moment, so I'm just running a virtual machine with an existing copy of Windows 10 on it, so I'm going to get some information from that machine to create this upload file. So if I jump onto my VM, you can see that I've got a Windows 10 machine with 17.03. What I'm going to do is run a couple of lines of PowerShell. Um, I should point out actually, there's a blog post that my friend um, Paul Wynn Stanley wrote for Microsoft TechNet UK. Uh, he takes you through everything step by step. It's a really great post, uh, and some of the PowerShell that I'm going to use is in here. Uh, and also, Microsoft have published the PowerShell as well in, on this post. Mike Niehaus has, has uh, published that one. So, if I go back to my Windows 10 machine, I need to get these bits of information and create this CSV file. So the CSV file I've just got pre-created. It's got three column headers, device serial number, Windows product ID, and hardware hash. So if I run these one at a time, and then I can create the CSV file. Copy this. And that's going to be my serial number. Second line will get me the product ID that I'm using. I say you can use Pro or Enterprise for this. And then the last one is quite a long string. It creates a hardware hash, which is basically the sort of unique identifier for the machine. Uh, and because it's so long, it's going to create a text file with the name of this machine. Um, I've switched to the auto, just a, a folder that I've created on the C drive called Autopilot. Uh, otherwise, your default folder is uh, Windows System 32, and you'll end up sort of fishing around trying to look for that. So if I run that, hopefully we should get a text file created in this folder. And as you can see, it creates me a really long, let's use notepad, quite a long string. So all I'm going to do is copy that 
and put that as the third value, put in the third column for hardware hash, and then save this. Okay. So now I've got my autopilot devices. I'm going to copy that out just locally so that I can upload it. Uh, replace the existing one that I've got. Okay, so that's all I need to do. What I'm going to do um, shortly is, because I'm just doing this in a lab on a VM, I'm just going to reset Windows 10 on here. Um, if you were doing this um, with a physical device that's just been delivered, for example, um, you can boot the device up, hit F10, and you should be able to gather this kind of information from there, so you're not actually having to do anything uh, extra. So you can upload it then and then go straight in. Whereas a reset on this device can take a little time, so what I'll do, I'll cut the video when I reset it and come back. Before I do that though, I need to um, go into, there's two options here, Azure Portal and you need Microsoft Store for Business at the moment. Um, I'm sure a lot of this will come into the, Azure, uh, the Intune Portal even, um, very shortly. But what I've done, I'm in my Intune, um, Azure Portal, in, in Intune, Windows Enrollment and you can create deployment profiles. So this is just preview at the moment, and again early November this, 2017 and I've created two profiles. You can create profiles in here, or you can also go to the Microsoft Store for Business, which um, allows you a, a little bit more. You need to um, go into here, hit Manage. If you haven't got Microsoft Store for Business, you can um, basically go to the website and just add it in. It's, it's no extra cost, you just add it to your subscription. Uh, hit Devices, and you can see straight away I've got Autopilot Deployment. What we can do is we can create a new profile. Now I've created two already, so I'll just show you this as an example. You give it some kind of meaningful name. These are automatically on, these autopilot deployment uh, default features. You can choose to skip privacy settings, disable local admin account creation on the device, and skip the license agreement. At the moment, that is it. Um, that, hopefully, uh, I'm pretty sure will develop further and we can start to customize a little bit further and um, get to some kind of level maybe that you can try and achieve with OSD at the moment. So I'm going to cancel it because I've already created a couple. What I need to do is uh, add my device and now it's going to look for my uh, CSV file that I just created. If I open that, you can add these into a group if you want so you can group your machines together. Maybe you want to do this by department. So you might have a sales group, you might have a finance group, um, an IT group, or whatever. It depends obviously on your business requirements. So I'm just going to skip that for now because this is just demo. Uh, if I see this up here, refresh my list. Then we can see that it's been added in and you can see there's no profile. Something else to note as well, um, you might also see an error um, message up here. So if you add a machine, for example, that's already in there, you will get an error and it will offer you a CSV file to download um, with a link in it. You can go to the link, it gives you the error code and you can translate that. Um, what I'll do, I'll upload load that. In fact, I've got an example I'll show you here. I, I can upload that into the post as well so you can see that. So I'm just going to open that, um, that example. Whilst that's opening, what I need to do with this machine now, I need to assign it a profile. So if I select the machine that I want, drop this down and I'll choose non-admin for this one. So the user that enrolls this machine or provisions this machine um, should not end up being an admin on that machine. Fingers crossed. So once I've added that in, you see this refresh my list to see if it's done at the top. I can hit that once more. Still thinking about it. Okay, I'll give that a second. What we should see, if we get an error, for example, drag this over you can get this kind of uh, CSV. So this is one that I did I think yesterday where I added it and it was already existing. So you can see it gives me an error code and it gives me a link. So if I go here, visit that link, my error code was WADP007. If I scroll down here, check the info in your CSV file, the device is already registered. So they've already put some kind of error handling, some troubleshooting stuff in there which is uh, really good to see for something that's a new feature. Uh, if I go back to my Microsoft Store for Business, it didn't add, okay. Let's see if we can just do that one more time. Let's 
jump out. One of the perks of playing with new features. I jump away from that and back to devices. There we go. We can see that it's actually applied the profile. All good. So all I need to do now, I've uploaded the information to Autopilot. Autopilot knows about it and it's ready, waiting for that machine. Um, all I need to do is basically start provisioning that machine. Uh, and as I say, I'm just using the Windows 10 machine, so I'm going to reset this. So what I'll do, I'll set it resetting. It can take a little time. I'll cut the video and then come straight back. Uh, and hopefully, with the magic of technology, we'll see it at the provisioning stage. And there we go. The um, Windows 10 machine has now been reset and it's been restarted and gone through the out of box experience just as though your end user will. Uh, if they receive the device, open it up, boot it up, and they will eventually reach this screen. So I'm going to step into the position of the end user now and go through the wizard that they will uh, need to go through. So, first of all, region for me is UK, so I'm going to click yes to that. Next up, I should be able to choose the keyboard. Okay, so keyboard for me again is United Kingdom. And I'm not going to add a second keyboard right now. So I'll skip that. Now, this virtual machine that I'm using, it has a uh, an internet connection just like, um, just like a cable. So if you were using Wi-Fi, you will have at that point been presented with a, a connection um, to Wi-Fi so if you you would see a list of SSIDs and you will need to choose one and connect to it and so on um, for the eagle-eyed amongst you I'm now seeing a license agreement um, page now if I just jump back into my policies you might notice that if I edit my policies I actually chose to skip the end user license agreement However, if we look on the detail, the end user license agreement skip is actually only on 1709 or later. And the version I'm using is 1703. If I drop down here, you can see I've skipped end user license agreement. It's not very clear until you click the information. Okay, so just something to be aware of. So I jump back on here now, I can accept the user uh, agreement. And there's lots of kind of friendly messages that have been put into this wizard. Um, you can see it's detected a connection, as I say. If you're on Wi-Fi, it will ask you to choose an SSID and connect and so on. So what it's going to do now is connect up to um, Autopilot and check if this is a known device with Autopilot uh, and effectively grab a profile. And it also will um, check if there's any updates available and, and pull those down too. So I'll just give that a minute. Okay, so it thinks we're up to date now. Just let that do its thing. And then hopefully we should be presented with a um, uh, credentials prompt that the end user can put their information in. So their email address and their password of the uh, Azure AD account. And from there, they should be authenticated. It should join the machine to Azure Active Directory and also enroll into your um, into Intune or whatever MDM authority you might have. And there we go. So you can see on this one, there's a little bit of custom branding as well, which is just from my lab. So you can see that it's detected using Autopilot that I'm in the P2E.work as your Active Directory and it's in my lab. So I'm going to log in as a, uh, a user called Anna. If I hit next, it's going to ask me for Anna's password. Just try that one again. Hit next there. So to say that's authenticating with Azure Active Directory. Um, just using the internet connection that I've got. I'm not on any corporate network or anything like that. So what it's doing right now is joining the device to Azure Active Directory. So there's lots of kind of friendly messages that have been put in here. Um, with the end user in mind, I think, really. Just give this a moment. 
it should also enroll as I say into uh, in tune in my case but if you've got um, MDM auto uh, enrollment enabled then it could enroll into whatever um, MDM authority you're, you're using as you can see it's getting everything ready so what we're hoping to see um, is basically a lack of prompts and we've seen that already so once that's running if I just jump back into there you can see in the policy or the profile even it's skipped Cortana, it's skipped OneDrive and it's skipped the OEM registration pages uh, automatically set it up for work or school and it's given me some company branding now my branding was just quite basic because it's my lab but obviously if, if you've got your corporate branding enabled in your um, as your active directory then it will show that as well just to make it look a little bit more user friendly and recognizable for the end user um, and obviously we won't ask for any privacy settings or anything like that so I'll let that run through and we'll catch that in a moment Okay, so as you can see, my organization requires Windows Hello, so I'm going to set up the pin for that. So just a slight delay on this. There we go. So Windows 10 is working away in the background, setting everything up as we said. Uh, as we set in the profile, give that a moment. And there should be some multi factor authentication on this as well. So, obviously, when the user is signing in, you've got that sort of second authentication uh, method as well in there. So, there's some security thought about here as well. Just let that catch up. So you probably heard that as well, so that's text me. Make sure I get the right number. So there's my multi-factor authentication completed. That should now begin to sign me in. And it's asking me to set up a new pin due to Windows Hello. So we'll set that up now. This organization requires uh, six digits. Okay, all set. I hit the OK button and you can see immediately that we signed in. I'll just give that a moment. So what have we done there? Obviously we've um, booted the machine up from new into out of box experience. We've chose our region, our keyboard settings, um, we've connected to a wireless network if that's an option and we've basically authenticated and then set up Windows Hello by um, putting in the, um, the number from my text message or it could be a phone call in, in whichever, uh, whichever you set up for your end users and then effectively set up a pin for Windows Hello. So straight away that signed us in and hopefully we should be able to see that this machine is now um, part of the Azure Active Directory domain. Just give that a moment and we can see there the organization is my active Azure Active Directory domain 
Um, it randomly generates a new machine name and the version is still 17.03 as I um, put that in. Uh, the other thing that we should be looking for, I can choose the right one, is that the user on this machine is not a local administrator because that's in the uh, policy that we set or in the profile. We'll just give this a moment. Okay, there we go. Let's check in groups and administrators. And we can see that the uh, account called Anna is not listed. And that is it really. So the, um, the end user is now, they've got the de device already. Uh, you can push your application through to that because this should be enrolled with Intune as well. I jump back into MDM devices and just give this a refresh. My Intune portal, we should hopefully see that device uh, enrolled now. There we go on the 7th, and there's the device name, user principal name Anna. Okay, so obviously, some of this information is still to come through because it's only just enrolled. And there you go, so you can push applications and any other kind of changes that you would normally push through and manage that device accordingly. So that's it. Okay, hopefully you found that useful, um, have a go, there's lots of information in the blog post, um, so yeah, enjoy, thanks for watching.